And then oftentimes the person I give first place to was horrendous, you know, was, was horrendous as, uh, you know, just, I'm trying to put that nicely. Uh, no, oh, but it was not you, like, you did great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was, is this our first official mailbag episode? No, actually, this is our second. We did do we did do one. Um, okay. So we got uh, a message here from uh, from Mark, who plays with Wasatch and District, um, and he he presented kind of his thought process here for the for his question. He said, uh, "Soloing in grade four is tricky. The emphasis is on accuracy and the basics. For that, you need to play at a drastically reduced tempo. However, most of the material available is played at a much higher tempo." So how to play a 2-4 march, a Strass Bay, pointed reels, etc. at lower tempos while not losing the idioms? That's the question. Is the idiom predicated upon tempo? By which he, he clarifies, is it even possible to express a Strass Bay properly at less than 100 beats per minute? Does the grade 4 piper have to make a choice? Once you get into grade 3, tempos are up and the issue starts to go away. The majority of competing soloists are probably in grade 4 just based on his math, you know, the math of a skill pyramid, right? Um, and they need they need to focus, you know. Um, he says, I'd like to hear uh, top pipers of the RSPBA being prescribed tunes at slower tempos to show that it, how it could be done. Um, these are his, he says, these are my disparate thoughts. I'm curious uh, what you guys think. So what do you think, Andrew? Emphasis on disparate thoughts there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> However, uh, I think what you're getting at is a really common issue that we have, which I'll summarize, which is uh, when you're a beginner, you should be playing more slowly. But the message that you get uh, in, in solo competition from judges is that uh, you have to play fast or else it's not uh, going to be competitive or viable. Right? Like you're not That's being true the, to the form in so many ways. Yes. So that's like, that's a, and, and again, this is just my opinion. Uh, and I don't want to be misconstrued for violating the terms of the EOS PBA judges code of conduct. Okay. This is just my opinion about something and I'm not directly criticizing anyone. Or, Why are or you being to, so clear about this, Andrew? Have, have, have you had trouble in the past? Is this a, uh... no, but I don't want to have trouble because, uh, mm. you know, uh, they make us sign some, somewhat disturbing uh, restrictions on our constitutionally protected rights when you become a judge of the USPBA and, and like, fine, whatever. But, uh, but also I think it's important that we talk about this sort of thing, because what I'm about to say is uh, I think that um, this issue represents a huge problem, hmm. right? It would be like, it would be the equivalent of um, asking 12 year old weightlifters to snatch the same weights as professionals, mm. uh, in, in Olympic weightlifting competitions. Right. It's like, it would be, uh, of course in weightlifting, it would be wildly unsafe, but of course, hugely detrimental to the progress of most 12 year old weightlifters. If you ask them to lift, you know, hundreds of pounds over their head at a developmental stage in the game. It would, of course, be not wise, right? Mm -hmm. You would develop all sorts of horrible aspects of form and, uh, you know, misguided ideas about what, quote unquote, real weightlifting is if you ask them yeah. to just, you know, like, don't even bother showing up unless you can get 200 pounds over your head. It's like, that's not really how it works. But that's kind of what we do in piping, right? Mm -hmm. So, so many entry level solo score sheets come back. Uh, um, with the idea that tempo is too slow. Now, maybe it was played really poorly, but that's what you should focus on, <laughs> okay? And it shouldn't be the tempo. tempo. It's like, oh, mm -hmm. tempo too slow, tempo too slow. Well, wait a minute. You know, like I work all year to get my stress base sounding good at 120 beats per minute. And, you know, I'm a professional level competitor. I play in bands at the highest levels for a really long time. And my goal is to get a stress bay to approximately 120 beats per minute. So therefore, obviously, that's a really bad idea for beginners. We would mm -hmm. we necessarily need to go slower so that we can focus on the fundamentals. The idea that uh, a Strass Bay is not a real Strass Bay when it's played more slowly for developmental purposes, that's a really crap idea. And whoever so came up with that was just is just wrong about it. Uh, and it, and we, we should be we should be aggressively 
uh, working with our judging panels to get them to understand that and to ensure that they're not going to base competitive results at the entry levels uh, on whether or not they quote unquote got it up to the right tempo. Like mm. that's, that's not it. Cause I can, right? I can imagine one person, my one person, I'm not thinking of anybody specifically, but I can imagine one solution being put forward being something like, okay, then um, grade four competitors cannot play strat space. Strat space, not an option until you get to grade three or even grade two. Mm -hmm. And that would be like, well, that solves the problem, kind of, but then a grade four competitor never gets to practice competing, you know, never gets to like warm into competing with a Strass Bay, mm -hmm. right? I do think that, I do think that Strass Bays are, of, of the variety of idioms that we play, Strass Bays are among the more difficult ones, mm -hmm. uh, but they can be slowed down and they can be simplified. Um, and the sooner that you can get your feet wet with some Strass Bays, the better. Um, and maybe... I, when I played in grade four, there were no stress space, you mm -hmm. know, um, now they have like, now they have some sort of stress bay real competition in grade four. But, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the question should be this, what, what should we be doing to give the maximum amount of people the best possible chance of progressing? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and so like, and, and again, we talked about this outlier phenomenon, uh, a, a couple of conversations ago, Jim, mm -hmm. the, um, and now I lost my train of thought as I, uh, shifted in my chair. What did we say? Oh yeah. The outlier problem. Yeah. The problem with demanding that people play high tempos at the entry level grade. The problem is that is not that no one can do it. The problem is that some people can do it. Yeah. Right. And those are your, those are your outliers who are, they're going to be in grade one in two and a half years anyway. Right. So like, you know, uh, if they want to play fast, that's great. Maybe all things being equal, right. If everything else in a, in a, in a performance was equal, maybe a slightly faster stress bay is better. Okay. Mm. I think that's totally fine. Right. But that can't be like the criteria that's required in order for your tune to even be considered. And that's what you see quite a bit. It's like, Oh, uh, Johnny, he just played too slow. But what about the other details? Like, off. yeah. What about the other details? Like his pipes were actually blown steadily and fairly well tuned and uh, his grace notes were crisp and accurate and he didn't have any crossing noises uh, and weird phantom crossing, like weird phantom false notes in between all of his note changes because he was going too fast. Um, and he actually presented a solid stable groove instead of one that was wildly all over the place, uh, which is what all these people who were playing super fast were actually doing. Mm. Uh, you know, like, what about that? Well, it doesn't matter because he played too slow. That's the mentality that you see on a regular basis, uh, which is a huge, huge problem, right? We should be working... We should be working as uh, pipe band associations to not make tempo such a key thing. Now, is a Strass Bay a real Strass Bay when you play it at two-thirds tempo? I don't know. Who cares? Is T-ball real baseball? Hmm. No, it's point. not. Like real baseball, you don't hit the ball off the tee. So no. And, and then certainly you don't get cut off you know, uh, after uh, everybody gets one chance to bat. You know, right. like that's not, that's, this is not real baseball. Okay. Quote unquote, it's not real baseball. You can't steal bases and whatever, but there's a reason why we start entry level baseball players uh, with T-ball. There's reason, right? It's because it's uh, accommodating to outliers and non outliers alike. And it gets people started. It gets people pointing in the direction that we need to go so that you know you can have at least a reasonably high success rate up into the higher grades. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I've so never, that's, I've that, never... it, it, yeah, I just want to just finish up by saying, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a major uh, it's a major problem in my opinion. Uh, the, yeah. the the tempo like like the high tempo or it's not viable. That mentality is v extremely problematic. Mhm. Mm I've never been a judge myself, of course, but um I, I don't know. Have you have you encountered these like the, these statistics? These studies have been done with like like criminal court judges that like they tend to give uh, harsher sentences in the hour and a half before lunch, and then less yes. harsh sen sentences after and stuff like that. I've got Definitely. to imagine that 
like for a piping judge, it would be a genuine challenge over the course of like a three day weekend of hearing a lot of people playing at a lot of different levels to like take every individual and place them in their context, like remind yes. yourself, okay, this is a grade four piper and they're about to play, you know, what they're about to play mm -hmm. that I, I can imagine that would be very difficult to do, especially on I the agree. third day. Yes. And especially with entry level performances, which are typically not great yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's the, the purpose of the end. Just like T-ball is not great yet. You know, like you might have, you might have one kid in 30 steps up to the T and like smacks one in the outfield. And so mm -hmm. like for one brief moment, it's exciting, but otherwise it's just kind of like a hot mess. Right. Yeah. And you got kids picking dandelions instead of playing shortstop <laughs> and whatever, like, but that's normal, right? That's entry level. And, and you get the, that's a problem with the judging too. Uh, which is interesting. One of the things I think about is that maybe the entry level, maybe nobody, I don't want anyone to come away from this podcast think, saying Andrew definitely thinks this, but maybe the entry level of solo competition uh, is just playing to a standard uh, instead of a, a ranked thing. You mm. know, I've, I've often thought that like it would be so much better when I judge the entry level. Uh, which, by the way, I keep saying that because different parts of the world have different grade numbers that represent right, totally. the, the absolute beginner. So, so like the, you know, the entry level solo grades, I, I often think to myself, I would much rather just give this person a little bit of feedback than worry about who should be what. And then oftentimes the person I give first place to was horrendous, you know, was, was horrendous as, uh, you know, just, I'm trying to put that nicely. Uh, no, oh, but it was not you, like, you did great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it was, it was horrendous, which by the way, like it's good. That's fine. Like we got to get out there. We got to get our hands dirty and sometimes it's going to be horrendous, but sometimes the entire entry level rate, uh, grade is just wildly not it. Yeah. So it's, it's really just who's the least horrendous is who is exactly. who gets, ends up winning. Yeah. And you shouldn't. And then meanwhile, what what message does that person walk away from the competition from, regardless of what my feedback is? I th oh, then it's like I don't I even have to that. work on anything. Yeah, I'm the I'm awesome. Ooh, I won that. Mm -hmm. But like, really, I I kind of think the entry level grade should be like, hey, have you met the minimally viable standard to start competing for real against others? Yes, like, and it would just be a yes or no type thing. And then maybe you need seven yeses before you're put up into the, the, you know, the next grade, right. Yeah. As opposed to you need, you need X number of points because the points at that level, they don't mean much. Mm. Right. Uh, and you just don't know. And we do have, we do have some mechanisms for trying to deal with this. We've got the above grade level tick box, right. You know, that you get on the score sheets. Uh, but that can be weird too. Above grade level says who, and mm -hmm. Above grade level in 1990s, possibly different than it is now, and blah, 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 so on right. and so forth. Uh, yeah. Or maybe you have one tune that's above grade level, but then when you play your other tunes, it's not. Right. right. So, so at some point, the point system sort of makes sense and the, the competition makes sense, but I don't know how much it makes sense at the entry level grades. But anyway, I suppose one, one thing I would just – you know, this conversation has sort of just become about the idea that several of the ways that we do this probably need a rethink. Right. Yeah. What was the original question? Is the idiom lost? Is the idiom lost when you have to slow stuff down? Does it even count as a stress yeah. bay when it's under a hundred beats per minute? Um, yeah. And so and that's, uh, so let's just, um, I, let me just, give one more stab at that right yeah or just bring it back to the bring it back to the t-ball analogy is the stress bay idiom lost when you played at 90 beats per minute probably but i don't think that's a deal breaker just mm. like you know t-ball is not real baseball i think playing a stress bay at 90 beats per minute helps everybody get in there and get a chance to talk about some of those key things like, you know, your stress bay expression and some of those specific types of stress bay technique that we're going to want, you know, uh, it might not be a real stress bay yet, but I think that's might be a good place to start, uh, such that, uh, someday you might play real baseball. 
I digress. Okay. Yeah, I mean, we you can cut that off at any point. No, that that was a good way to that was a good way to tie it up. Absolutely.